Question 1.1 consists of four measurement questions designed to assess your understanding of circular and cylindrical shapes in the context of building designs. You are given a context where the Van Harte family plans to extend their braai area by adding a fire pit area. You are given a diagram and a picture of the fire pit area. The diagram shows the fire pit seating and fire pit. The fire pit is in the shape of a cylinder. In question 111, you have to identify the three-dimensional shape that is indicated by the letter A in the picture and diagram of the fire pit area. From the picture of the fire pit area, A refers to the cylindrical seat next to the fire pit. The keyword in this question is three-dimensional and not two-dimensional. For this reason, we have to state that A is a cylinder. Know that if you said A is a circle, you will be given only one out of the two marks because a circle is a two-dimensional shape. In question 112, it is stated that the diameter of the fire pit seating is 400 centimeters. You will have to write down the radius in meters. The radius of a circle is half the diameter of that circle. So the radius of the fire pit seating will be 400 centimeters divided by 2 and this equals a radius of 200 centimeters. Since there are 100 centimeters in 1 meter, 200 centimeters equals 200 divided by 100 and this equals 2 meters. In question 113, it is stated that the length of the fire pit seating is 3 quarters of the circumference of a circle. You are instructed to determine the length of the fire pit seating if the circumference of a full circle is 8,5 meters. The circumference of a circle is the length of the boundary around the circle. Since the seating is 3 quarters of the circumference of a circle and the circumference of a full circle is given as 8,5 meters, the length of the fire pit seating will be 3 over 4 multiplied by the full length of the circumference of 8,5 meters and this equals a length of the fire pit seating of 6,375 meters. In question 114, it is stated that when they built the fire pit, they filled it with concrete. You are instructed to write down the formula from the list below that they will need to use if they want to determine the amount of concrete needed. The formulae that you can choose from are the volume equals the length multiplied by the breadth multiplied by the height or the volume equals the side multiplied by the side multiplied by the side. Or the volume equals pi multiplied by radius squared multiplied by the height. From the list of formulae, the first formula length multiplied by the breadth multiplied by the height gives you the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism. The second formula side multiplied by side multiplied by side gives you the formula for the volume of a cube. And the third formula pi multiplied by the radius squared multiplied by the height gives you the formula of a cylinder. Since the fire pit will be built in a cylindrical shape, the formula that they will use if they want to determine the amount of concrete needed will be the volume equal to pi multiplied by the radius squared multiplied by the height. Question 1.2 consists of five questions related to maps and plans, specifically designed to evaluate your understanding of strip charts and map directions. You are provided with a strip chart that shows the route from Durban to Pretoria via the N3. The total distance of this route, which is 557 kilometers, is indicated on the chart sides by the arrows running from Durban to Pretoria or from Pretoria to Durban. Along the N3 you will notice branches in the road that lead to various towns. In question 1 to 1, you have to write down the type of map that is displayed here. The type of map displayed here is called a strip chart. In question 112, you must select an option A, B or C that is not applicable to this chart. The options are as follows. A. The chart is not drawn to scale. B. The roads are not displayed with straight lines. Or C. The actual distances are displayed. 
In this question, it's important to identify the option that does not apply to this chart. Option A, the strip chart is not drawn to scale, is applicable as strip charts are typically not drawn to scale. Option B states the roads are not displayed with straight lines. However, this is inaccurate. The roads in this chart are indeed represented with straight lines. And in option C, the actual distances are displayed is also accurate as you can see the real distances marked on the chart. So the correct answer is option B which states that the roads are not displayed with straight lines. The statement does not apply to this chart because the roads are drawn with straight lines. In question 1, 2, 3, you have to write down the total distance from Peter Marisburg to Pretoria. If we take a close look at this chart here, you will notice that some distances marked on the side. These numbers indicate the distance along the N3. From Pretoria to Peter Marisburg, or even in the other direction, from Peter Marisburg to Pretoria, we will find that the total distance indicated here is 488 kilometers. In question 1 to 4, you have to write down the national roads that are used to travel from Pretoria to Bethlehem. From the chart, we see that the N3 and N5 will be used to travel from Pretoria to Bethlehem. In question 1 to 5, it is stated that a person drives from Bergville towards the N3. You will have to write down whether this person has to turn left or right to drive to Peter Marisburg. Looking at the strip chart, Bergville is located here on the chart. And if the person drives from Bergville to the N3, at the N3, he or she will have to make a right turn towards Peter Maritzburg. Question 1.3 consists of three measurement questions that were designed to assess your understanding of both the metric and imperial measurement systems. You are given a diagram that shows four different bed sizes in the United Kingdom with the dimensions expressed in centimeters as well as in feet and inches. For example, focusing on the king size bed, the width is given as 150 centimeters or 5 feet and 0 inches, whereas the length is given as 200 centimeters or 6 feet and 6 inches. In question 131, you have to write down the imperial dimension of the length of the small double bed in words. From the diagram, the small double bed is given as 6 feet and 3 inches. So this in words will be 6 feet and 3 inches. In question 132, you have to write down in centimeters the width of a king size bed to the width of a super king size bed as a simplified ratio. From the diagram, we see that the width of a king size bed will be 150 centimeters, while the width of a super king size bed will be 180 centimeters. This as a ratio will be 150 to 180. Now, using the ladder method to determine the factors of both 150 and 180, we see that the highest common factor between 150 and 180 is 30. So dividing both 150 and 180 by 30 will give us a simplified ratio of the width of the king size bed to the width of a super king size bed of 5 to 6. In question 133, it is stated that a company in South Africa wanted to see if the dimensions are 100% correct and did the following calculations using these conversion factors. The conversion factors used in this calculation were 1 feet equals 30,48 centimeters and 1 inch equals 2,54 centimeters. The calculations were performed as follows. 6 feet and 3 inches equals 6 times 30,84 plus 3 times 2,54 and this equals 185,04 plus 7,62 and that equals 192,66 centimeters. They concluded that 192,66 centimeters is 2,66 centimeters larger than the specified size. You are now instructed to identify the mistake that was made in the calculation. 
analyzing the calculation, if we look closely, we see that the mistake made was that they substituted the incorrect value of 30,84 centimeters instead of the correct value of 30,48 centimeters. So we have to make the statement that the incorrect number of 30,84 instead of 30,48 was substituted. Question 4.1 consists of two maps and plans questions that were designed to assess your understanding of assembly diagrams. You are given a diagram that shows step 9 of 10 of the assembly instruction for the Kingsley and Oliver Twin bunk beds with a slide. Alongside with the instruction, you are also given the parts and hardware list for the Kingsley and Oliver Twin bunk beds. In question 141, you have to identify three parts that make up the slide. From the parts and hardware list, we see that the three parts that make up the slide is the slide board, the slide side left, and the side slide right. In question 142, you have to write down the name of the tool that will be used to attach item 23. From the parts and hardware list, the tool that will be used to attach item 23 is called an Allen key. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you found this video helpful, you can subscribe to be notified of more videos like this. And you can check out this video next.